Meet the Japanese superfood that never really left the archipelago. Spoiled beans on the verge of dissolving back into primordial soup. Slimy, gooey and stinky protein strings. Let me present you to natto. Natto is definitely not everyone's cup of tea. But if you look through its slimy appearance and focus on its inner values, you will actually find its taste quite enjoyable. On top of that, these fermented soybeans offer substantial health benefits. The mouthfeel and taste can be best described as cheesy, nutty, creamy, with some degree of bitterness, while the stench of stinky feet tingles your nose from the inside. Consider it vegan cheese. Let me show you quickly how to eat it. Natto is usually being sold in little styrofoam boxes like this. You rip off the cover and clamp down on the plastic sheet that covers the beans in the box, while pulling the plastic sheet out to avoid the unnecessary formation of stinky sticky natto silk. Usually some tiny plastic bags containing sauces or mustard accompany the package. Before applying them, make sure to give the undead beans a good stir with your chopsticks. When you think the creaminess has peaked, you add the sauces and stir the mixture once again to maximize its frothiness. Then you are good to go. Usually you apply to rice. Rip, clamp, pull, mix, sauce, eat. Bon appétit! Now that we know how the inhabitants taste, let's look them into the eye. Meet the citizens of Natto Town. May I introduce you to Bacillus subtilis natto? This bacteria is almost omnipresent in soil and can easily be cultivated by adding hay, straw or grass to water. Natto was made in a similar way in the past. Cooked beans were wrapped into hay or rice straw and kept at a temperature between 30 to 40 degrees Celsius for some days. The bacteria spores on the dry grass inoculate the beans, lead to fermentation and create the desired end product. Although modern production is far more sophisticated by using controlled bacteria inoculation, the package of Natto still reminisces the good old times. Straw everywhere. Bacillus subtilis depends on oxygen, but can also survive anoxic conditions. Natto is produced by aerobic fermentation. In order to keep its taste pleasant, the producers must control oxygen content and temperature carefully. Without oxygen, the bacteria start to use nitrate as energy source. If the oxygen supply during production is insufficient, the end result would be more or less pure ammonia. The little bright dots swimming across the screen are bacteria spores. They are the dormant stage of the bacteria and are extremely resilient to temperature and drop. They can be transported by aerosols or in dry state even by wind. At the end of the fermentation process about 80% of the biomass in the gooey natto strings are bacteria spores. So how comes there are active bacteria in the footage? Well, I revived them for you. To do so, I mixed a bit of natto with water in a test tube and carried it around in my pocket for half a day. I transformed my pocket into a makeshift bacteria sauna. The active bacteria are pretty interesting to watch. If you look closely you can see bacteria swirling around in a kind of micro vortex. I really wonder what causes this behavior and to be honest I have no explanation for it. Natto is another example how we outsource digestion to microbes that are not part of our microbiome. Biologically speaking we profit from the bacteria digesting our food and creating nutrients for us. In return, the bacteria survives, protected and well fed in our natto factories. Aren't these bacteria fascinating? I could watch them all day. Well, I hope you enjoyed the short journey to Natto Town. Thank you for watching and enjoy your natto. Please listen carefully.